and welcome to another edition of Medicare Simplified with your host, Dave Miller. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of Medicare Simplified. Today, we're going to start a four-part trip. Part one today is going to be about Medigap. Part two will be about Medicare Advantage. Part three will be about value-added benefits or incentives, whatever you want to call them. And in part four, I have a special guest coming on who's got many years in the insurance business. He's going to go over the differences between Medigap, Medicare Advantage, pros and cons, and in a way, try to help you decide which product would be better for you. And since every individual is different, a husband and wife don't necessarily need to be on the same plan or even on the same company. And we're going to discuss all that with Tom when I interview him in a few weeks. So let's say we get started. When you look at a Medigap plan, you got to keep several things in mind. One is the premium you'll pay for your Part B, and that may include some IRMAA as we discussed previously. Then you got your Medigap premium, your Part D premium for your Medicare drug coverage, and it all adds up, but it could be worthwhile and it's an excellent product. Don't get me wrong, Medigap, Medicare Advantage, they're both great ways to take care of your medical expenses. And we're going to look at that throughout these next four podcasts. Basically, Medigap is private health insurance for individuals on Medicare, and it's sold by private health insurance companies. Open enrollment for Medigap begins when you turn 65 and enroll in parts A and B. Now, if you're going to work past 65, don't worry. Whenever you enroll in part B, that's when your six-month window will open up and you will still be in an open enrollment situation. The best part about open enrollment is you can't be turned down. You can be turned down for Medigap plan if you're outside your open enrollment period. If you have any kind of health issues like type 1 diabetes, heart failure, some form of lung problem, anything that's chronic could get you denied or it could raise your premium. You see, outside the open enrollment period, if you enroll in a Medigap plan, you could be underwritten which means you have to answer a ton of medical questions, list all your medical problems, your drugs, your doctors, how often you see them. It's really intense, just like if you're going for a high-dollar life insurance policy. Basically the same thing. Then they'll look at all that information, and they'll do some form of calculation where you get table-written. And table-written means a much higher premium, or they could deny you, meaning you're not going to get a Medigap plan, at least not with that company. Chances are, if one company doesn't accept you, none of the others will as well. So if you're going with Medigap, the time to do it is when your Part B effective date goes into effect. You can always switch to Medicare Advantage later, but it'll be very difficult to impossible to go from Medicare Advantage to Medigap unless you're in pristine health. You must continue to stay enrolled in Part A and Part B and pay your Part B premium. If you lose Part B for any reason, you will be disenrolled after a month or two. And remember, Part B, to get it back, you have to wait to January 1st to March 31st, and then you won't have it until July 1st. So that means it could be a very long wait with just Medicare Part A. And that could mean penalties involved if you don't have some form of insurance for your doctors and prescription drugs. You'll have hospitals through Medicare. So you're going to need a form of health insurance until you can get your Part B again. And at your age, if you're on Medicare, it's going to be expensive. Now, when you look at the Medicare, again, the Part B premium with our MAA, Medigap comes with a premium also, and it will go up over time due to cost of living and age. Usually one or two times a year, they'll increase it. How much they increase, it will vary by company. All Medigap plans are standardized, meaning Plan G with Company A, Plan G with Company H, Plan G with Company J are all the same. They might throw some value-added incentives in there, like prescription drug discount card or a discount card for dental. But it is illegal for them to change Plan G. It's standardized by the Center for Medicare Services. So what you want to look at is the premium and, of course, the star ratings and things. We'll get into that in a minute. 
but why would you want to pay $170 for Plan G from one company when another company in your area is selling it for $130? Key thing to look for when shopping for Medigap plan. We'll talk about that again a little bit later. Also, any medical facility, doctors, outpatient clinics, hospitals, emergency rooms, places where you get labs, if they have a contract with the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, you're in network. All you have to worry about is your Part B deductible. You'll be taken in in network with insurance anywhere in the United States. Isn't that a sweet thing to have, not having to worry about will they take your insurance? You are going to go into any hospital, any doctor's office you want, and they will take it. When Medigap came out, there were 10 plans, and it has changed over time. Currently, you have plans A, B, C, D, F, G, K, L, M, and N. Not all states carry all these plans. And if you notice, that alphabet's a little out of whack. And I'll tell you about that in a few minutes because some plans have been canceled. In Pennsylvania, Plan G and N are quite popular. And if you look at them closely, you'll see their similarities. Both of them, you will have a premium and you will have to pay your Part B deductible. For 2023, that's $233. Both of them give you 80% coverage if you travel overseas. Something else that's quite nice. Plan N, though, you will see a doctor here and there, and they can only charge you a maximum of $20 per copay. It could be 5 or 10 but most of them will probably max you out at 20 And it doesn't matter if it's a specialist or your family doctor. If it's preventative, it's free. Outside of preventative services, it's a maximum of $20 copay. If you go in the emergency room, it would be a $95 copay, unless you're admitted to the hospital. If you're admitted to the hospital, that will be waived, and then you just worry about your Part B deductible. And if you've met your Part B deductible, then you got no more money coming out of pocket for a hospital stay. But if you go in the emergency room and are discharged from the emergency room and sent home, it is $95. Now, there is one other thing about Plan N that's kind of a drawback. It's called excess charges. Providers that do not contract with Medicare can charge you up to 15% more than Medicare agreed fees for services. Now, if you go see a doctor that's not taking Medicare, you might want to find one that does. Because these companies and these doctors and facilities will bill you that 15% and it can get quite expensive. And then you have to file the paperwork with Medicare to get reimbursed. And they're only going to reimburse you what the Medicare agreed amount is, and they have an amount for every single thing you can think of. There's nothing out there that they haven't thought of and have an agreed amount on. And then you're still going to lose money because you're not going to get 100% back of what you paid. Not all states have excess charges. Pennsylvania is a commonwealth. We do not allow excess charges in Pennsylvania. If you plan on going on plan N, get with a good insurance agent and find out if excess charges are allowed in your state. If they are, you might want to think about Plan G. Now, as I told you earlier, some plans were canceled, thus the out-of-sync alphabet I gave you earlier. Plans H, I, and J, as of June 2010, were no longer allowed to be sold. Anyone on these plans were grandfathered in and allowed to keep them. Plan J, however, put a little monkey wrench into things because it had a prescription drug plan. But the Medicare Prescription Drug Improvement and Modernization Act of 2003, signed into law by George Bush, designated that all Medicare recipients must obtain a Medicare Part D plan. As a result, drug coverage under Plan J became non-creditable, and anyone keeping this plan must get a Part D plan or suffer a late enrollment penalty, like that nice lady I told you about a few episodes ago that wound up paying a horrendous amount of money for a late enrollment penalty for Part D. Medigap Supplemental Insurance Plan C and F as of January 1st, 2020 were also taken off the market. Like with plans H, I, and J, anyone enrolled in them could keep them and be grandfathered in. However, if you're 65 before January 1st of 2020, like say you decide to retire at uh, 67, and that happened to be in 2022. You could still enroll in Plan F and C because you turned 65 before the cutoff date. 
Now, this change came about as part of the Medicare Access and CHIP reauthorization legislation in 2015, which prohibited the sale of Medigap plans that covered the Part B deductible. Now, let's take a look at a few pros and cons. The biggest things with Medigap, no networks, and you can use any medical facility anywhere in the country, and you get 80% overseas coverage. That's powerful, especially if you're worried about a serious problem with your heart or if cancer runs in your family. Sometimes you have to go to a different state for treatment or surgery. This is huge. Some drawbacks, higher premiums, separate Part D plan, and that's another premium. You got to pay your Part B deductible, plan N. We, again, we got to worry about excess charges and co-pays for doctors and emergency room. Now, some companies might offer a package deal where, for example, you get plan G and then for a few dollars more, of course, that means a higher premium or a separate premium, you can get a dental vision hearing package. And that way you have dental vision and hearing because Medigap doesn't cover any of that. Some of them will give you a gym membership, but not all of them, or they'll give you an allowance every month to pay for your gym membership. So these are things you want to consider when looking at Medigap. Now, one thing that people around my area know is I've got a top 10 list for everything. So let's take a look at the one for Medigap. Premiums. Medigap is standardized. Why pay more for the same product as long as the company has a good reputation in your area? And remember, if you have to pay a $20, $15 application fee, but you're saving $20 a month, it's a no-brainer to me. Pay the application fee. Get that policy because you'll save $100 over the course of a few months, and in a year, you'll save even more. It's worth it. How much? Has their plans increased over the years? Has the premium gone up just a couple dollars or does it skyrocket? What is the percentage of premium increase from year to year? Some companies will say, we'll give you a 20% discount, but you're guaranteed a 2.5 increase every year. Well, at least you know how much of an increase it'll be. But keep in mind, those premiums may go up 2.5%, and then a little bit higher because cost of living goes up. So what was 2.5 might now be 3.1. It's not guaranteed to stay the same and stay at 2.5. How's there member service in your area? Can you get an answer quickly? Can you even get an answer? Because I've had some companies that still haven't gotten back to clients. And of course, that takes a while and it's frustrating. You don't want to deal with bad member service. Do they offer any type of discount? For example, if you and your spouse go with the same company, same plan, will they give you a family discount? Most companies will. Does your state allow excess charges if you're looking at plan N? If they do, I'd go back to looking at plan G. It is a significant difference in premium, but those excess charges can really hit you hard, especially if hospitalization surgery is involved. Do they offer any extra benefits like dental, vision, and hearing? Maybe a package deal that would increase your premium, but now you can get your teeth taken care of, you can get glasses and get your eyes taken care of, and possibly a little help with hearing aids. Not a bad deal, really. Are they a proven commodity for the life of their company? What's their star rating? Take a look at their reviews. Get on Google and look at some reviews for them or whatever search engine you prefer. How long has that company been in your state? How long have they been in business? If they've been in business for a long time, that's great. How long have they been in your state? Because if they haven't been in your state long, chances are they may have some issues here and there. And like any company, it's only going to be a growing pain. That's no reason not to get them, but it would put a caution flag up for me. And lastly, I would say, talk to some of your friends you know that have Medigap. Hopefully, some of your friends will have one company, some of your friends will have a different company, and you can compare notes as to which ones gave better services, premium increases, it's things we discussed just a few minutes ago. This is always useful. The main thing with Medigap is go with the lowest premium and the best reviews and star ratings. Some companies really jack those premiums a lot, and that's important to look at. You're on a fixed income now, and you don't want to get insurance you can't afford. Our next podcast will be about Medicare Advantage. I hope today's information you found informative and useful. 
As always, please feel free to reach out to me at dave at migfu.net and give me any questions you may have. Comments are always welcome. If you have something you want to talk about and have me do a podcast on it, please send in that suggestion as well. I've enjoyed talking to you and I look forward to continuing our journey. Have a great day. If you've enjoyed this podcast and don't want to miss future episodes of Medicare Simplified with me, Dave Miller, please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to check out my book, Medicare Ready, Set, Go, available on Amazon in paperback and Kindle format. If you're looking for Medicare advice, please reach out to me at dave at mig, the number four, the letter U, dot net, or online at mig, the number four, the letter U, dot net.